Hi everyone and welcome to your watercolour class. Um, my name's Siri, in case you haven't met me before. And um, I'm going to be doing, uh, it's kind of going to be a little bit of a watercolour 101 for you guys, just because I'm not sure what level everyone is at and uh, some of you might be master watercolourists. Um, but I think it's always worth going back to the basics uh, because it's quite a tricky medium. So um, what we're going to do is we'll start out just playing around with washes because that is sort of key to, um, to watercolour. I'm just going to show you how to do a wash anyway. I'm using quite a big brush and I'm getting a really dark colour to start off with here. And then all I'm doing is just pulling and putting it in the water and then I'm just pulling the colour down. Sometimes I'm really adding a lot of water, sometimes I just pull it down like that. And that's all there is to a wash. And the main thing being that you don't want any brush strokes to be showing up. It feels it should feel like a smooth like feel, field of colour. Obviously if you do it this way up, it's, it's going to drip. Um, you might like the effect, but you know, if you want it to be smooth, just keep it flat in front of you. Next thing, children, is um, I'm going to make a really simple shape on my paper. I'm going to make an egg shape with the just the water, kind of purple water, but um, then I'm going to drip colour in. <laughs> and this is kind of what it does best. It, it creates really nice um, things without you really even having to try. So that's something to bear in mind. It does half the work for you. So I've just dripped it in. I could put another color in, make it a color that's kind of going to go with the other color because they're all going to blend together. And you can play around with this as much as you like. And if you get too much water, it sometimes gets a bit flooded. But as long as you're not using your brush too much, you're just letting it um, kind of spread around. And leave it for a while, just put it aside and see what it does. I'm gonna show you some pictures to kind of inspire you the next thing. Because um, we're gonna eventually do a still life, but before that, just a little exercise with a few different colours. So this, these are um, by Georgia O'Keeffe, who you might reckon know the name of. She's more famous for her oil paintings, but these are really little, simple watercolours. But you can see how she's separated out the colours, and there's this white in between, that's the white of the paper. So bear that in mind, because that's what we're going to do next. Um, show you one or two more. This is a really nice one. You'll think of something, you know, that that appeals to you. The main thing being you're going to have a couple of shapes, if not more, and you're going to separate them out with the white of the paper. And finally, I just want to show you some watercolours where she's kind of got a bit more detail. There's still quite simple landscapes in uh, New Mexico. I'm just going to really quickly do that because I think you've probably got the idea. So I'm kind of making one one shape here, um, another shape here, but I'm separating them out. And I'll maybe just do one shape in the middle of there and then I can add different colours into each of the areas. It doesn't look quite so kind of basic. <laughs> now I could put some, you know, orange in here. And it will just find the lines, which is kind of cool. And uh, purple. All right, the other thing you can do um, is use a rag, of which I have many these days, um, and you can always, you could blot it down like that to create texture if you feel like it. 
Um, you know, or if you want to make it a bit lighter and just bring back the white of the paper. So just blotting that yellow. So, you know, that's, that's my beginning. I could go on, but that's just to give you an idea of, you could do a really complex one um, with a lot of different shapes, but just leaving that, sh that um, white in between the shapes is key. You can even pull it around like that. See what it does. Might make it a bit more interesting. I think it does actually. <laughs> okay. Next, <laughs> we are going to do a little still life. Just one object. If you can find some kind of um, something with a simple shape. Uh, one colour preferably. I've got this which is just like a little bottle and I like the colour of it and I'm going to put it hopefully in the sun so you'll be able to see that it's, whoops, um, it's got light bits to it. Okay, maybe I'll put it on there. Put on white paper if you can and then you can be able to see the, the shadow. I'm gonna make the lines, the really basic lines of of the shape, with really with the of the object. Sorry, with a really light pencil line, and you can kind of erase it if you don't get it quite right. But just if you keep it super light, then it won't show through too much. Don't worry too much. At this point, you're not like going for a perfect perfect final result you're just you're just seeing what it can do so bear that in mind go easy on yourself all right and here I've got a little bit of the shadow there so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm using quite a bit of water and I'm gonna bring some blue and some purple into this mixing area of my watercolor and I'm just going to start putting down some colour. It's super light at this point. And one of the things I want you to do is really bear in mind where the light hits uh, your object and see if you can leave it light where that happens. So if it, like, if you see, see some light, really just exaggerate by leaving lots and lots of white paper open. You see, I've left it open. I could always fill it in, but just for it to kind of have the lightness. All right, so that's like the first stage. And then all I'm gonna do is just make a darker version of the color I was using. So um, you're not bringing any different color in. You're just using, a, you're scrubbing it around, not that hard, but you know, just getting a bit more color and then Let's see what what that does, and it's going to blend in, to, you know, because the it's still wet. It's going to blend in with what you've already done. If you don't want it to do that, you're going to have to wait for it to dry, and do, you know, something else at a different stage, uh, which I might do with this. I might just take it to this point, maybe put a little bit in there, and um, a little bit more in my shadow. And I'm going with even more dark. See, it is sort of all blending together, but I quite like that, so I, I want it to look that way. I want the inside of the bottle, like here, to be quite dark. And because it's separated from here, you see, I can just blob it in and it's not going to go anywhere. is a bit dry it should be completely dry actually and I've already started putting some some darker um, edges and so on into it so 
At this point, you if you want to get into detail, you really can. And I'm using a kind of slightly smaller brush. And if you can see, I'm kind of like um, heading my brush towards the edge so I can get a really clear edge, like here. And, um, you know, just see if you can go in and get those, those darks. Um, but one word about that, it's always quite good to leave a watercolor a little bit unfinished. There's just something really nice, at least in my opinion, about a kind of like a sort of open, slightly um, sketchy watercolor rather than one that's been overworked. So, um, so think about that. So I'm just gonna kind of stop right here, right? even though I could do more. Um, here's another thing. What if I want to erase? watercolor. Well, say if I drew my bottle and I really didn't like what I did. I right, like, here's my bottle. Um, and even if I leave it a little bit to dry, okay, and I think, oh, I really don't like that. Well, actually, the good news is, especially when it's wet, that um, you can get rid of watercolor just by flooding it with water and then <laughs> so sometimes it's not completely uh, white you know at the end but you can really you can erase so that's quite good news I always think let's see if we can erase something here might be able to let's try this shadow huh. see I'm flooding it and it looks kind of funny there, but hopefully, not promising anything. <laughs> there you are. So you can kind of, even at much later stage, erase parts of your watercolor. Okay, and that is about it. So thank you very much and have fun. I look forward to seeing your work.